there is, I mean, in Europe, they're happily vaccinating. They've already uh, vaccinated about 75.6% of their population. Uh, they're speeding through. They've done some trials uh, with the two mRNA vaccines, and they've already decided that they're going to be vaccinating the young people. Why is it such an issue, and why it, it, are they sort of dithering between the two? I think the main issue is that the safety um, concerns of the vaccine itself, and you will say that Europe have rolled it out, but they are having a lot of side effects. They're having deaths, just as they are in the States. We've waited, which I think was very wise, and yet we're not really looking properly at their data. We have groups in the States, they've, they've written up very recently 63 children with severe changes on their cardiac scans with myocarditis, this heart inflammation, which is one of the main worries. But instead of saying, we'll wait for the follow-up scans on these kids, which is what the JCVI wanted to do, which seemed very reasonable, they're passing it to the CMOs to decide instead. Now, the JCVI are the statutory body, and they have the knowledge and expertise, and they have deemed that the safety benefits for these children for the vaccine, because their risks of COVID are so small, that actually the risks of the vaccine are likely to be in balance for the known risks, and then there are all the unknown risks, like that we don't know whether these children who've had myocarditis are going to get better or not, um, or any other long-term risks that haven't yet come to light. So they decided definitely this shouldn't go ahead. The I chief medical officers sorry, haven't even looked at the physical safety because they've said, oh, well, the MHR approved it, therefore it must be safe. So they're only looking at impact on education and mental health. But of course, the easy way to deal with that is not to send healthy children home from school every 10 minutes, which they've already agreed they weren't going to do after the 16th of August. So it's not got an impact, COVID, on physical health and education. It's the, it's the disruption was the political policy. It wasn't the COVID. And that, there's where the problem is. So actually, and more than half these children have already had COVID. So if they go back to school and they started last week with everything feeling normal, had so many positive result, reports from kids around the country saying how great it is to be back in school and to feel normal. So the thing about the psychological impact is being thrown at them by the government scare messaging. It's completely unnecessary. Well, can I just ask, but you mentioned myocarditis. I mean, how bad yes. is it? Because I, I read that uh, it, um, I, only, I think it was 79% of those who, who suffered with it actually it was very mild. And it's not actually that bad. I mean, you can get myocarditis, which is an inflammation of the heart, from actually just getting a virus. So Yes, you can the, indeed. Is, is that side effect slightly blown out of proportion? <clears throat> No, it's not been blown out of proportion. The problem is nobody's done the studies. So the, this group in the States have looked at 63 children who came in with mild symptoms and their symptoms got better and their cardiographs and echoes, which are what normally would have been done, also got better. But they did cardiac MRI scans and they showed actually damage, scarring on the heart muscle. So this is serious. And then they followed up only six out of the 63 because they've been collecting this data only over the last two months since the children have started the vaccination program there. And two of those six have recovered and the other four, two to three months after the vaccine, still have changes on their scans. And this is the sort of thing that they are now advising you should have three to six months with no sport. So that's not going to do wonders for your mental health, is it? And there have been deaths in the States, definitely um, of adolescents, also with thrombotic complications, not just myocarditis. And also we have no long-term safety data in terms of reproductive health, fertility. We know that the mRNA vaccines are concentrated in ovary and testis on the very small number of animal studies, but they haven't done the sort of studies you would expect. Now, in a pandemic, as you say, if you've got a serious health risk to an adult population, you may be prepared to dispense with some of that information. But when you've got a child group who are not at risk seriously from this virus, their risk of death if you're a healthy child is one in two million, then why would you take a vaccine which has a one in 10,000 risk of myocarditis? And we don't yet know whether it's serious or whether they'll get better or whether they won't. I could not, as a paediatrician in all faith, ever recommend this with the lack of knowledge that we have of the safety. I'm, a I'm not a paediatrician, so I no. don't want to uh, gainsay your, your experience. But I have two <laughs> principles here. Number one, uh, I've got children, and no. if this option was open to me, I would make that decision. I would look in detail about the kind of things you've said, but I wouldn't yes. expect the government to compel or even coerce me to give my children no. uh, this uh, vaccine. The second point is this. 
there's an actuarial risk in either direction. And I think you've implied it. We don't really have a clear mm. picture here uh, of yeah. how much damage it does and what the benefit would be. My personal view is that, that very, very few children are in danger of serious, uh, uh, serious damage from COVID. And if they do, they normally have an underlying health condition. But yeah. while I forgive the government for trying to do more, my worry, and I'm interested to know what you think about this, my worry is the government keeps wanting to look like it's doing more and more. So it's now scratching yeah. around the edges, just looking for other people to vaccinate. So how, how would you feel if they said, our advice is that you can give your children this vaccine, be aware of these small dangers? Surely that would be a reasonable middle way? Well, I don't think we normally offer the parents' choice to do something that might harm their children. So we'd have to be very careful going down that route. But yes, if they were going to say, if you're really worried about this, you can go through the normal channels and get your child vaccinated through the GP or the vaccination clinic. It's up to you. But that's not what they're saying. What they're saying is we strongly advise children should have this and we're rolling it out in schools. And we all know about peer pressure. Look at your picture of all these kids in their masks. They were being made to feel that if you didn't wear a mask, you'd kill your granny. And if they are made to feel that having the vaccination is doing your bit for society, well, it's not because we know that the Transmission of this disease is just as easy whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated. So the only purpose of vaccination is for your protection. And if you're in a vulnerable category and you are vaccinated, that's, that's an excellent decision for you. But if you're not in a vulnerable category and then you're pressured by friends to have a vaccine and then you land up with a major adverse reaction, that, to my mind, is a dereliction of duty by the government and their medical advisors. I know people on the JCVI are absolutely horrified by what's happening. And their professional opinion, their professors of paediatrics, they are not at all comfortable with the idea that this has become a political decision. And we already know that in the States, they're getting approval for five to 12 year olds. And there are research for six months to fives. In the UK, we have not had one single death of an, a one to four year old over the whole of the 18 months. So why would anybody contemplate it? But, you know, this is the, the trend, the pressure. Is it money? What is it that is pushing people to roll this vaccine way, way beyond what was needed? And what we were told originally it was going to be for over 50s and people with health, health vulnerabilities. It was never meant for children. It was clear from Matt Hancock. All sort of Chris Whitty himself, three months ago on a press conference, was saying this is not for under 18s. The balance of risk is not in favour. And yet now, the political pressure, they've succumbed to political pressure, I if believe. If that's your view, then, for people like me, mm. the question is, and I'm sure there are many people watching, saying, why doesn't your profession say so? Because I know, I think... It looks like your colleagues are backing the government. And that bothers me. As I know. Well. I know, it bothers me. And it bothers me that the chairman of the JCVI has a, a, a grant from Pfizer and well, that well, most Ross, of the people on stage have large conflicts of interest. Well, I also just Ross, will point out there's going to be there, a court case. Sorry, go sorry, on. Can I just stop you there? I mean, OK, so yeah. you personally, I mean, I hear what you're saying, but you can't speak for all the other paediatricians no. and so forth. No, of so, course I can't. So they need to speak if that is the, in fact the case. Yes. And we're, we're not yeah. hearing that. So I, know. I, I hear I you know. saying that, but to me, I'm not hearing yes. that. Mm. And I'm quite comfortable no. to allowing my 12-year-old to have uh, the, the Pfizer or mm. the Moderna yeah. vaccine because I have an underlying health condition. Although, in my eyes, I'm wondering, could it potentially be better for them actually to catch COVID, yeah. the actual... Yeah. Yes. Up to date, yes. of COVID. Yes. It could, could but I think that's the other thing, Lucy, which you're pointing out, which is that we know that it doesn't prevent transmission, but we also know that natural immunity is more effective. And we know from Israel already that the vaccine is waning at the people who'd already had COVID, because in Israel they never vaccinated people who'd had COVID. And yet we've insisted on rolling it out to everybody. And for the children who've had COVID, there can be no benefit from being vaccinated. There can only be risk. And actually, if they go ahead and have COVID, I mean, at least more than half of them have had it. But if they get it over the next few months and they go on passing this around in schools, that's not a problem. And it will give them much better immunity Ross, than having this vaccination. Ross, could they not perhaps, I mean, so could they not do antibody testing in the children, yes. first of all? And they could. They could. Already had mm -hmm. And then once they've done yes. that, then give the others the option to actually have the vaccine. Yes, Therefore, yes. all of those who've, yeah, and those who've already had positive P PCR tests, you can assume they're immune. Yeah. Those who haven't had a positive PCR could have antibodies. 
um, and those who wanted to could pay for property, sell immunity, maybe. Well, why but, don't you, you know. tell them that, Ross? Because you probably we have, we have. I assure you, you have written so many letters. You're telling them that, <laughs> but, then, you know. we, and there is also already. there's a legal injunction coming out later this week too. So I, you know, I don't suppose who knows, but there will be it will be a hearing in court before this goes ahead. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.